Well, hello again all my YouTube subscribers and thanks once more for joining me here on my YouTube channel as we take a look at yet more vintage classic dirt bikes. Now, as I am very busy at the moment compiling brand new material for my YouTube channel, in this particular video, I've decided to share with you some of the very nice bikes I spotted in the paddock at the 2013 Vets Motocross Donations at Farley Castle. Now, the main reason I have chosen this particular year is mainly because this was actually the last time I attended this massive event and uh, hope to return again someday soon for another look around this fantastic circuit. Now the very first bike on our uh, Farley Castle adventure is this lovely 1983 500 MX Armstrong monoshock bike. Now, uh, of course, these bikes were fitted with that uh, almost indestructible Armstrong four-stroke motor. Now, this bike belongs to Andy Malik, who is a regular racer at the Vets MX Donation. And this particular bike has been very reliable for Andy in the last year or so and has taken him to at least two four-stroke championships in Scotland alone. Our next machine, of course, is this uh, Dick Do 490 Michael, which is uh, actually uh, Twin Shock Rider Alec Rach's machine for uh, that particular year. This bike, of course, has some very nice uh, trick parts on it and uh, looks uh, very nice in this uh, yellow and black wheels uh, colours. Of course, these Michaels, you can paint them just about any colour you wish and it's nice to see this one uh, decked out in the yellow livery. Now if my memory served me correctly these lovely CR250 uh, Honda Evolution bikes were uh, a couple of bikes that were taking part in the uh, Dave Thorpe uh, racing series which was uh, all the rage at that time. These are absolutely fantastically prepared machines and uh, as you can see these ones were uh, dedicated to the memory of uh, Dave Livesey. Now of course also pictured at the 2013 Vets MXDN event was this guy here Neil Hudson, the first ever British motocross rider to win a 250 championship. Of course, Neil also went on to win the World 250 Championship in 1981. Now, if there was ever an award given out at the uh, 2013 event for the most horsepower in one team, then of course that would have to, without doubt, go to the German team as they turned up with this superb collection of uh, very tricked up 510 Husqvarna's. Of course straight away you can see immediately that these are not just original Husqvarna machines and that the Germans have pulled out all the stops by adding some very nice touches to these bikes in order to give them a chance of a decent result uh, come a race day. Now of course these machines did sound every bit as good as they looked and uh, if my memory served me correctly the uh, German team did really well at the 2013 event riding these uh, fine collection of Swedish Husqvarna bikes. Now these were another thing that caught my eye on the day, these uh, very high quality hand-built uh, sidecar frames uh, were on display. I'm not sure of what the name of the company that was actually building these but uh, as you can see these are 
very well engineered and a nice little uh, thing if you are looking to build yourself a sidecar scrambler. Now of course no classic or vintage event would be complete without some very nice bikes from the UK uh, bike builder uh, stable of Rod Spry. Now this was just one example of the very high quality motocross bikes that are built by Rod and uh, Rod had a few of these JBR John Banks Racing Hondas also on display at Farley. So you'll know that uh, if you ever order a bike from Rod or have one uh, restored then this is the kind of quality you are going to expect. Now also Rod's restorations uh, are featured very frequently in the classic and vintage dirt bike magazines around the world and uh, Rod restores many different kinds and makes of classic dirt bikes and this fantastic looking JBR Honda is just one of them. Now during my paddock walkabout, this is a machine I was drawn to almost immediately when I first uh, saw it in the paddock. Now this is American Lee McCollum's 1992 WR500 Yamaha which was actually built in the USA and then Lee had the bike shipped to the UK to ride it at the 2013 event. Now Lee told me that he had no intention of taking the bike back to the States after the Farley Castle event was finished and he immediately offered it for sale after the checkered flag dropped on the very last race of the day. Now as far as I'm aware the bike was sold on after the race event and uh, some lucky bugger has got himself a very nice machine. Now also on my travels over the weekend I came across this lovely pair of YZ250 Yamahas. Now as to who owned the bikes I'm unsure but these of course were a very nice couple of examples of this particular bike. But of course this annual VETS MXDN event at Farley Castle is worth the admission on its own just to wander around the paddock and look at some of the stunning bikes that people bring along to these uh, kind of events. And of course the racing, if you like it, is another added bonus. Okay, next up is this uh, very nice 1978 LH250 Laverda Twin Shocker which belongs to Andy Laverton. Now actually Andy turned up at this event with every intention of racing this machine although there were that many people wanting to see and talk about this bike that uh, at the end of the day Andy just decided to just put it on display and uh, talk about this quite rare machine. Now this of course is a very rare bike and certainly the very first La Verda motocross bike I have ever seen or heard of. But these bikes of course came as standard with these Husqvarna motors and are not an owner retrofit by any means. But nevertheless it is still a nice, interesting and even obscure piece of off-road history. Now also pictured were this lovely collection of Honda CR250 Evolution machines which were of course uh, all part of the Scotland Evolution racing team. Now these bikes are all owned and prepared by uh, the team principal Callum Loudon. Now here we can see a few of the Scottish riders, uh, Tony Keg at the top of your picture there, number 30. And as we come down we can see Gordon Morrison and uh, Tom Grant who are just a few of the riders of these machines. Of course all of these bikes are owned and prepared by this one man, Callum Loudon. 
few more of the riders. We have Sean Doherty with the glasses there, uh, Mark Kenny, Morton Hanna, and uh, Tom Grant uh, right in the front of your picture there. Now, of course, there were many bikes up for sale at the 2013 Vets MXDN event, and this particular bike, this 1982 KX250 Kawasaki, was offered for sale at £1,700. Quite a nice, tidy bike. Now, as to whether the bike was sold on the day, I'm unsure, but uh, it's a very, very nice example of these uh, very quick KX machines. Now 1982 of course was the very last year of the air-cooled Kawasaki models. Now this very nice collection of uh, Honda machines were of course the American motocross team's uh, bikes for the 2013 weekend and as usual they were all immaculately prepared as they were parked here on display in the paddock. Now you may remember Phil Denton Engineering supplied similar CR250 and 480 twin shock bikes for the USA twin shock team the year previous at Farley Castle with the likes of Ryan Hughes and Chuck Sun who rode those bikes to great success over that weekend in 2012. Now also at this 2013 Vets MXDN event was this uh, young man here. This is Jean-Michel Bale, who of course was originally a motocross racer, then uh, gave that up and uh, took up a uh, MotoGP, which he had some great successes in during the years. And uh, this Farley Castle MXDN event was Jean-Michel Bale's first ever return to motocross after uh, doing his uh, stuff in road racing. Now, John Michel did uh, really well at this 2013 Vets MXDN event aboard this lovely Honda, and he is seen pictured here uh, signing and autographing a magazine article for uh, Ian Clark. But of course, Jean-Michel is just one of the many celebrities you can always find at the VETS MXDN events. Now, on the subject of celebrities, this of course was the first time I'd ever been introduced to this racing legend. This is Mark Fulton and Brian Wood. Now, uh, I managed to meet up with the ex-Kawasaki rider at this uh, 2013 event. Now these guys showed me some really good hospitality over that weekend and uh, were a great company but uh, Mark is still very active on the twin shock racing scene and is currently racing a Honda 480 twin shock bike which is owned by his good friend uh, Brian Wood. And uh, this is just a picture of uh, the guys on the day enjoying themselves at the 2013 event. Now this lovely featured uh, CR480 Honda Twin Shocker is uh, one of the bikes that was built by PDE Engineering, Phil Denton Engineering, for a customer who was uh, scheduled to pick this bike up at the uh, 2013 event. And as you can see, these machines are restored and built to the very highest specifications by those guys at the uh, Phil Denton Engineering Works. Now uh, this is a lucky man here. This is Gavin Williams picking up his uh, lovely CR480 Honda from the Phil Denton guys. Now let's face it, uh, who wouldn't be happy sitting astride a beautiful machine as this and as you can see Gavin is well pleased with his new bike. Now another nice bike spotted in the paddock over that weekend was this lovely uh, 250cc water-cooled Kajiva bike. 
Now, uh, this bike, as far as I know, was not taking part in uh, the racing of the weekend, but uh, it was on display leaning against this orange van for most of the weekend. A very nice looking little machine. Now, uh, whether it was offered for sale, I am unsure, but uh, it was a very, very nice little machine indeed. Now the bike looked very original to me, although I am not uh, an expert on these uh, little Kajiva bikes, but uh, this little RXW250 uh, certainly caught my eye and I'm sure it would be a nice buy for somebody. Now this featured machine here is an absolute brute of a bike. This is Belgian rider Johan Boonen's uh, big Husseberg that he raced at uh, Farley Castle that weekend. Now believe me when I say that this is an awesome piece of kit. This big four-stroke Husseberg thumper can certainly dig the roosters on any type of motocross track. Now I had the joy of listening to this monster blast past me trackside as I was snapping away taking pictures of the bike at this event and with Johan Boonen in the saddle believe me it was indeed music to my ears. Yes indeed there is certainly no shortage of horsepower when you ride this big beastie. Other superb bikes in the Belgian uh, racing stable was this lovely 500 twin shock Suzuki. Now this was an absolutely awesome piece of kit. This bike was very, very fast on the day and uh, as you can see it was absolutely prepared immaculately to take part in this uh, fantastic race event. Yes of course these bikes were prepared to the very highest of specification and uh, came complete with these uh, lovely YSS rear twin shocks on the back but uh, this was a very very nice very quick RM Suzuki 500 twin shocker. Now another of the quite rare bikes that caught my eye over the weekend were this lovely pair of Moto Villa machines. Now of course these Italian built bikes were uh, the brainchild of Francesco Villa who was actually a top road racer and motorcycle engineer in his native uh, Italy. Now their motocross machines won many championships in Italy during the 1970s until they then began introducing these twin shock water cooled motors at the beginning of 1981. Now the air cooled 250, 350 and 410cc bikes are reasonably common and uh, there are still a few lying around the tracks of the UK. But nevertheless, there are still a few of these nice Villa machines out there if you look for them. But mind you, the air-cooled bikes are quite common, although these water-cooled varieties are quite rare machines, and this was the first time I personally had come across them at this uh, 2013 Farley Castle motocross event. Now during this short video we have seen some excellent examples of off-road motocross machines, some of them good, some of them not so good, so uh, I thought about time we should uh, take a look at the downright ugly. Now this Russian built Voskhog Koba was uh, up for sale at Farley Castle for the meagre sum of £203. Now whether the bike actually got sold I'm not sure but uh, let's face it. It's not uh, the most glamorous looking off-road bike on the planet. 
The bike doesn't look so much like it's been manufactured, but uh, it looks more like it's just been thrown together using uh, scrap parts from uh, someone's uh, garage workshop. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this very brief look at uh, some of the nice bikes and not so nice bikes at the 2013 VETS MXDN. This video was brought to you in association with Love Sport Motocross Race and Leisure Wear and also in association with BMX Magazine, the world's undisputed number one publication for all your vintage and classic dirt bike motorcycles.